I saw something recently about AI and the rise of AI. It was was very, it the tentacle monster? Uh, well, there's a lot of those. <laughs> something interesting earlier about technology and specifically about technology I, I saw something recently about AI and the rise of AI it was, was very, it the tentacle monster uh, <laughs> well there's a lot of those <laughs> but you can imagine like the AI being or like the internet itself with an AI attached to it being this like big black blob with tentacles all stripped out you talking then about Ben huh you talking about Ben on the Umbrella Academy I don't know. I, just never I, I, I forget who said, <laughs> said this. I'm just supposed to keep going. <laughs> but you, you could imagine that you have a, a... It's basically like a tentacle with somebody's face on it. And it's like, it's not the person that you think it is, but it's AI talking to you or yeah. the oh, robot talking sure. to you or yeah. the internet talking to right. you or whatever. And it's telling you all these good things, but it's right. attached to something very, like, Why? I, di- I, like terrible. If it's not here, it's definitely coming soon. AGI, artificial general intelligence, where it's able to. I think to, that was that's already here. Well, there are definitely versions of it, but for as as far as for it to be extremely fleshed out and capable of really operating on its own without input from something else, I don't know if we know that for sure or not. But it there there. There's things that can behave in a way like what you're saying if somebody else is prompting it to do these things or has well, set a build a set of instructions I think, uh, anyway. When people it. when people talk about AI, there's like two different types of technologies. You have like what you said, the artificial general intelligence, which is something that can like reason, I right. guess. Sure. You could say. But then you have the they algorithmic can... mm-hmm. um process which yes. is not necessarily artificial intelligence because it, there's nothing intelligent about it. It's just it's it's, it's 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 a it's a it's a pathway forward that whenever you just you type in something and then it just directs you down a path. It gives you a, a result very quickly, and you can continue to refine that until you have what you want yeah, out but, of it. Yeah, but the the artificial intelligence that I think everybody's like terrified of, like right. what you said, it's right. something completely different. Something that, yes. like what you said, doesn't need an input, doesn't right. need a prompt. It just right. does. It's just out. It's growing. It's thinking. It's learning. And there is machine learning. There are pieces of all of that that have existed for a long time. Yeah, but if it's all put together somewhere, no one's out there blasting out. Hey, we did it! Everyone wants to have done it at this point. Well, you could imagine military technology is always about fifty years or more ahead of what the consumer population knows exists. So you could theoretically say that if we have the AI, so to speak, to the level that it is now, there's probably something else a lot something bigger. Been doing that for a long time. Well, I mean, AI has been around for a long time, but. The, the thing I was trying to say earlier, just a quick little, <laughs> little, 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 little blip here. Artificial Run intelligence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta get this out. <laughs> Stop interrupting me. <laughs> it was, uh, can't even think now. No. It was. Oh no. Oh, artificial no. intelligence is designed for the artists, no, for, for, for the wealthy. To behave like artists, it cuts out what's needed, what what makes artists special, I guess. So for people that have all the resources, they can go and create whatever they want, whenever they want it now, uh, as long as they have enough resources to do it. Previously, it was like, well, you actually have to learn how to do this thing if you want to paint a picture or make a song or write a story mm-hmm. or a script, whatever it might like be. Like you would, you would literally have to go find a programmer to create you an app, but now you can just ask ChatGPT, "What's the best way to go about doing this?" and it'll yeah. give you a, a code. Yeah, it'll. Yeah. So my my. So here's where I see AI. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of the intelligence out there is like it is generated from our, from what you do. Right. And, and they're picking it up off of your, off of your likes on your social media, off yes. of off of how much time you spend watching certain characteristics of videos. Like if right. it's a sports, you know, it, it can be the your ring camera at home. It's watching if you're yeah. bringing in a Kroger bag or a Walmart bag, sure. or if you're bringing in Coke products or Pepsi products. All this stuff is generated from what we do, mm-hmm. but. The one step that I that I'm trying to pay attention to it in 
is where is its connection to our lives and what i mean by that is usually everything we function off of is out of connection mm -hmm. so i'm sitting here with you two today mm -hmm. because we have connected somewhere previously right it wasn't that i fit an algorithm it wasn't that i fit uh you know what i mean it was a connection that all three of us were connected to and so uh, out of that we have this connection and we sit shoulder to shoulder and it's part of our lives mm -hmm. i'll watch your other programs we are at events outside of this mm -hmm. and so but when i look at that is i um uh, the connection to our kids yes and so when hmm. when we, we used to look at the destruction of the home when we used to look at the divorce rate, uh, and they would break it up into race. And uh, I get it. I get it. I, and I think there has been intentionally things done mm -hmm. to certain races in this country yeah. that are wrong. It, it don't, yeah. I'm not denying any of that. But when we look at the destruction of the family and the need for uh, basically a father's, where's the connection of the kid to a man? Then? Okay, mm -hmm. that's got to come from somewhere. My concern is that now the new con connection for some uh, young child seeking a father and they don't have it inside their living room and there's no relationship with this is we can artificially give them one that they th they paint their own picture of it. Right. They create their own. And if you're generating what you want those kids to mm. perceive as a father, then there's there could be a lot of destruction in that because then it depends on who's on the other end of it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If you're painting the picture for them, and when Need you're dad, talking, here's when line. you're talking about you sitting down with your daughter, mm -hmm. and you're going through these things, and you're having these deep conversations, I know that she's sitting there ready just to go to the dinner table because she don't want to hear it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. But something's planted inside of her right. through those conversations that is going to take place in her life. That's that's right. going to you see what I'm saying? It's oh, almost yeah. like a seed planted. Yeah. Now, what if that's coming from a phone? Yeah. Right. right. What, if, what if that's coming through an app where this is my reality? And what is the end goal for that app? Yeah. You know, what do they want actually guiding them to? Yeah. And so, it, and if we're looking at generations of that, I mean, it's already bad enough to go around town and just watch how many people are. I'm surprised we don't have people just walking out in the middle of the street because they have no idea where they're walking to and they're well, looking at their phone. That happens in the city. Oh, man. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm sitting here thinking. Thank God we live in the woods. Well, it's they, just they a deer that almost runs over right. instead of a car. They started putting the uh, the traffic <laughs> signals in the sidewalks because people are looking down. They see the green, yellow, red in the sidewalk. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible, but yeah. I hope it saves some lives. Good grief, man. Look up from your phones, I, people. I, well, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's, I hope it saves some lives. That's sweet. That's, that's <laughs> nice of you, Ross. <laughs> well, I, yeah, you know, I have... I don't know if I should say this, but... You shouldn't. I've, <laughs> this, is, this, this will be edited. Sorry, y'all missed it. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had the idea for a while, you know, if a peanut can take you out, do you really need to be here? No, if a peanut can take you I don't, out, do you no. really need to I don't know. <laughs> that went darker than I thought it was. <laughs> Not that I'm, I want anything bad to happen to any people like that. But okay, this so, is where my head goes. Okay, you know, so like, we huh. probably need to cut this whole selection out. But do you, did you realize, have you heard, and I was, I think me and Tanya were on vacation time, or maybe it was a business trip and we were, she was with me or something, but we were sitting in a hotel room. It wasn't really a vacation. It was like, anyway, doesn't matter. We're sitting in a hotel room. We have nothing to do, so we're watching, maybe it's History Channel or something. Hmm. And it was about how North Carolina, this is years ago. They had a program that if by the state you were deemed, how do I say this politically proper? Hmm. Okay, I think it would have been the word retarded would use then. Right, okay? right. It, and I'm sure that has a definition to it that's probably not it's the story of this term. Day. Okay, so, I mean, you know, but if you're, if basically if you couldn't think for yourself, right. they would... Make it where you could not have children. Oh, yes. Castration. No, I, right. Okay, and then I also heard of where, like, if a mentally unstable, no, I'm not just talking about unstable, I mean, they were, if they were to connect with another one and like that, that they would basically take those people out of society. Right. They're and trying to limit. Not population control necessarily. But, but to the uh, point that these people, that these problems clear, are not going to be in our right. population. Right. Well, and so I think this was in the, 
might have been earlier than that. I think it was like in the 1920s or something. I, I remember hearing about and, that. And yeah. I'm sitting here thinking, and you hear all these conspiracy theories, and like, we don't, you know, some people don't buy it, but I look at things, and like, okay, if, if our health system right now is weighing down our nation, wh what are they doing to solve it? Because, you know, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I, I think there's, well, I'm not. I shouldn't say this, but I mean, I think cancer is curable. Oh yeah, I think it makes way too much money to go stick radiation in somebody and watch yeah. them suffer well, for about five. The years. system is incentivized to keep people sick yeah. because right. that's where they're that's paid. Where they're, it's all, all you're, you're paid into treating illness. And so, so when we talk about population benefits. control or something like that, I don't think we're. I don't think that's too far of a stretch to call it conspiracy. When we look at the past and what they've done to try to. Right. Make sure certain people didn't weren't able to continue in our society. I'm not saying that they would take them out back and kill those people, but they sure did separate them and made sure that they weren't able to have offspring. Right. Mm -hmm. So they right. cut generations of people. And whether whether your view on it as far as health wise is right or wrong is where America's disturbed in our moral compass these days. And but. What if what if that comes back around now today, or your children are being fed? We need smarter people, and we don't, you know. Well, that actually that's already being pushed with the uh, the climate crisis, so to speak. It's uh, you have all these people talking about how there shouldn't be so many people on the planet. Right. We need we less don't have people. Enough space. <laughs> like people all for population control just to help the environment. Okay. Which <laughs> and so all right, so you look at that. And I, I'm with you on that. Okay, so I had one guy tell me, they said, and he was talking about, you cannot deny climate's changing. Okay, at first they called it global warming, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. they, that's they one, changed that's the language. One, that's one yep. direction. Yep. That, that means that it's the earth hotter. is warming. Okay, so I'm the type that I look, I had one guy tell me one time, a pastor tell me, and not, I'm not sure he's right on this. But we were talking about the age of rocks and the age of bones hmm. and all this stuff. And he looked at me and I mean, because there's, they put out all these years that like, I'm like, man, that wasn't here. Earth was not here. He said, how do we know when earth was formed and what age was it formed? Right. If Adam was formed by God as man. Right. As an adult. Without yeah. being a infant. Without going through these childhood mm -hmm. years and teenage years right. we're talking about here today, if Adam was formed as man, the trees that were upon the earth, where were they formed as? Right. How many years? How were they developed? Yeah. Were they saplings? Were, right. the, were they, you see what I'm saying? So the rocks, when so when we age it, hmm. we don't know how to age it. We're going by what we've seen over these past you know, thousands of years we documented it. You well, know, they, they go by the the carbon. Yeah, it's, that's it's what car, I'm, carbon, carbon element dating. fourteen. Yeah. I think is right. what it is. But, where they they measure the radiation because mm -hmm. it, it go. But there's no way to determine the the speed in which the radiation like it could be faster or slower at any other point in time. And you and where was know. this starting point? Yeah, right. where yeah, was you it? don't know. You had plus do you God created it. That's that's what he so, said to me, and I'm sitting there going like, okay, I'm taking a step back. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm with you because I, I want to fight all these millions of years. And, and I'm like, but there's really no way. But God's creation, if he would have, if he, like, like these stones, these slates we see right here in right. front of us. And I don't right. know if there's any behind so us. But in, in we're theory, then, on. when God created yeah. the earth, the earth could have been formed looking like it was here for billions of yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, then the other thing is, is that they said, well, you know, there was an ice age 14,000 years ago. Okay. I don't know that there was an ice age 14,000 years ago. We're coming out of an ice age, actually. I We're do, still in I, one, yeah. I do know <laughs> that at 14,000 years ago, that if that was, if it was a whole lot deeper on the earth, that we started warming from back then. Mm -hmm. So whether you want to call it global warming or climate change, it's well documented according to scientists that 14,000 years ago, there was a whole lot more ice upon this earth. A whole lot more. And according to their studies and everything, well then what caused global warming then? Mm -hmm. Because we had no factors. Right. We had no, I mean, we weren't burning gas and oils and all these, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There wasn't all these thousands of people on the earth. There wasn't, you know, the population was down a little bit. And so, but what caused it? 
what caused it to warm and to melt that ice and i look at this and i see that all that they're presenting is it, i don't even think they believe half of what they say i think they're well it, i think they're just ex, ex, putting a focus on it guesses, to try to you know. get us to sit here and feed off of it well, see I and it's funny because they, they go it's off of hmm. they, they go off of uh presuppositions right like yeah this, well let's why start therefore with this X. we're gonna accept that this is the case otherwise we have nothing to talk about so yeah, it's almost like your list here of feelings. Mm -hmm. It you know the color chart. Yeah, you know the the core colors. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're almost in a lot of them are almost in every color you get. You right. know what I'm saying? They might leave out a red, but you'll have a yellow, a blue, and a green. Mm -hmm. They're mixing into these, and then the same vice versa. You might leave out a blue, but red and green and yellow be in it. That's the way I feel about these feelings, and I way that's the way hmm. they. It's almost like they're trying to tell us that this was the core they're trying to create right. a core in this that that really they don't know if it was there or not yeah and so you can't determine anything else unless you use our core mm -hmm. right exactly and that's the and thing. it's like it's wait like... a second you this is not the four <laughs> primary colors here buddy it, it, you might think that's the primary but that's you have no facts to back that but this oh look at all these facts we created off of it right yeah. So anyway, I'm, yeah, I'm probably getting off it's, on a tangent. It's wild to See, you're gonna go lose on. viewers. Yeah, sorry, y'all. <laughs> <Go. laughs> or right. create a lot of Only hateful a... comments. <laughs> hey, I'm whatever. Not, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to divide us, y'all. I'm just trying. I'm just saying. I, well, I understand both sides of it because right. if you look, I I don't disagree that there is things changing in the climate. I might disagree on how that's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's definitely changing. And I, I, <laughs> it I disagree on the, <laughs> the frame in which they talk about things is like the time frame. Right. It changes depending on the sentence, right? Because they it could be like, "Oh yeah, in argument. the last couple thousand years," but then they're like, "Well, how did you determine that?" And then they're like, "Oh, but over the last one hundred fifty thousand years," and then you're jumping back and forth between these two time frames. So you, I don't know. It's just the way that they talk about things. Like they talk about thousands of years and then they go to 150,000 years to justify the thousand years. Yeah. So it's, hey, they got to realize I'm from a generation that was told paper bags were bad where we're destroying the earth and gave us plastic. <laughs> okay. At the grocery store. That, that and was, now they're telling us plastic is destroying the earth. We need to go back to bringing our own recycle bags. That's probably made out of either paper. Pla you see what I'm saying? Right. I'm from a generation mm -hmm. that was told that plastic was the next good thing. And so, and acid rain was going to kill us all. In the 80s, acid rain was going to take out. I was going to be playing outside baseball with my friends because we didn't have all these other. I was before Nintendo. The only thing <laughs> you could have inside was Atari and a little tennis ball guy. But, I mean, I'm sitting here like acid rain. If When it started to rain, there was a time in the 80s where you looked up at the sky and was like, is this it? <laughs> yeah. Is this going to be the time where this just melts my skin off and I'm going to be laying out here in the middle of the yard? I saw a meme you know? that was kind of similar to this once where it was like three guys standing in a Mexican standoff and one was like my grandpa, my, my great grandpa full of lead. Or no, my grandpa full of lead, my dad full of asbestos, me full of microplastics. And they're all pointing <laughs> at each other. <laughs> it's, you know, but, uh, but I don't want, I don't want plastic bottles floating down the river I right, live on. Right. I don't no, want my kids to be left a generation that's, you know, where, where we're not taking care of Earth. I'm 100% for taking care of the Earth. Right. Yeah, we have to be good stewards of the garden we were put in. But but until, you know, they're creating facts that just aren't facts. They're creating scenarios that just are not real. Right. And instead of taking time to study them out themselves, it's almost like it's a, a lot of it's a political agenda, but yes. it's an agenda for power. Right. Mm -hmm. And as long as we can keep you believing this, then we have power over you. I, I yeah. often say the government, and I'll tell a lot of people, I'm, I, I think both parties are out to get you. See the way. <laughs> sure. So if yeah, you know anything right. about, <laughs> if you know anything about uh, what's the what's the scientific study for it, botanism or botanism, whatever study plants. of plants. Yeah. Um, if botany. If you know what exactly it is that they feed on, that they pull out of that, it's all the carbon that's right. in the air that that the trees and the plants. That's how they grow big and green. Yeah. Right. You take the carbon out of the air. What's going to happen to the plants? Well, another fun part about carbon, they talk about, oh, the levels are increasing, the levels are increasing. So at what level is it actually going to be like this terrible thing's going to happen? There is no level. There's, no. There's no, they're and not. And it's the only yeah. thing that they're, that's the only <laughs> thing that they're watching. It's really the only, right. anything of the atmosphere, it's the only thing they're watching so, is carbon. So like, we're all dependent on this one measure that's just a part of what it, it what kills me here's what's funny this is a tidbit for y'all <laughs> so everybody out there that lives in a very large city mm. what i call a concrete jungle 
And the reason I call it concrete jungle is because you don't have trees. You're not sitting out here in the middle of this, and this is common. Right. You're, you're more likely to be down the restore. Quit yelling at us country people for destroying the environment. <laughs> concrete. <laughs> concrete alone is doing more to the environment than anything we're doing out here. Huh. We could cut this whole timber, and if I go pour a pad of concrete for a skyscraper... I've done more to destroy the environment than anything. So please, I understand your yeah. big city and your conveniences. Quit telling us poor people out here in the middle of the country that we're doing all this to you. No, you're feeding it. You're sitting in the middle of a big city going like, yeah, they're destroying the environment out there. They're, they're, they got a big old gas guzzler truck. They got cows. Yeah. <laughs> all those cow farts. All over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got cows and pigs. Please, please. They're making life terrible for us city folk here. Yes, please, please. Anyway, oh, I just went off on that's a bad rant. I love city <laughs> well, folk. I love city funny. folk. Y'all people, the, yeah. The town that we came from, we're weird. The Y'all weird. That, we're all good. The town that we're we came weird, from yeah. had close to a like a hundred thousand population. I think, yeah, pretty close. It was like eighty, ninety, somewhere around there. But uh, we live just down the street from an oil refinery, and uh, like, yeah, you'd uh, be. I I worked security for that oil refinery, but I would leave. Uh, just after my shift and like in the winter time especially you would have like a uh, kind of residue on your windshield mm. that like you would turn on the windshield wipers and go and it just smear and then the fog or then the your breath would hit it and yeah, it and would it just like stick and it would just stick. couldn't see nothing <laughs> you're like Ace Ventura hanging out the window yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd yeah. Drive the, a car yeah yeah no oh, it's, it's bad we lived down the street bad. from it and the whole place smelled like well there was a bread factory too so the whole place smelled like yeast yeah. That's fun. So that's fun. Yeast in but the air. I love being out here. I feel like I can breathe so much better. Definitely. Like people are like, oh, the pollen's my allergies. It's killing me. And then I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> let it. Let so it. so with a town of 100,000 people, and I'm sure here in about 50 years, that town will become a study of why everybody died of a certain disease. They didn't know that the oil refineries were... Anyway. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But in a town of 100,000 or, you know, that kind of population... Which is not a very large population if, if, if you're looking at the big cities, you know. I mean, that's sort of a joke. We're sitting in, what, a, ta- a county of 12,000, <laughs> a town of 4,000, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's man, it's, yeah. So, but I mean, in the 100,000, so like over where I was, from, so about 100,000, that would be, you know, not too far from here. But anyway, what did you see as far as, uh, I don't know, as far as, like i guess the adversities of the way issues were treated in society compared to in a small community like you're in now and what i mean by that is like you know we often talked about crime when you started when you start getting up to the hundred thousand range you started talking about crime i know in our society crime homelessness uh poverty uh sort of a uh, and there's usually a lot of medical, a lot of people are brought in for medical reasons, mm-hmm. you know. It's not going to be your large hospitals, but it's going to be your intro into before you're going to, you know, let's say a St. Jude or a Vanderbilt or something mm-hmm. like that. I mean, so did you see that a lot as far as in your area? I imagine industry was had to be pretty popular to, oh, ha- yeah. to handle was, that many people. Yeah, there was a lot of industry. There was several, several like, major manufacturers and, and things like that. There was also, like, a, a Pepsi plant. Yeah, you could go to work at, which I thought it was funny because I knew some people who worked there, and they were like, "Yeah, where the Pepsi spills all over the floor, it eats away the concrete." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great cleaning agent. <laughs> yeah, it's just like just run it through you a couple times, you'll feel it. <laughs> uh, but like did that. you see anything that that sort of sticks out to you that you look back today and sort of? And I hate to be the one asking questions. Y'all are the host here. I'm sort of... No, that's no, good. I mean, We're, forgive me. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, so there was I a, think well, we learned off of I think there was a very big spiritual problem. Like there was a lot of... Mm. There was a lot of money problems. There was a lot of drug addiction. There was a lot of uh, just crime and violence. A lot of a lot of violence, a lot of shootings. I actually have a video on my phone of oh, one yeah. night I went outside and it's like a freaking war zone. You yeah. had like... <laughs> like everywhere people firing from all kinds of different angles like it was and then that that's when we found out that kayla was pregnant i was like we got to go to the woods <laughs> like, i, I don't want to raise a, i don't want to raise a daughter here yeah not a daughter for sure not yeah but mm-hmm. so yeah. that's what you know i just think about that and i think about 
I've I lived always outside of cities. I grew up in a in a decent sized town down in Mississippi, one of the larger towns from Mississippi. wasn't the capital, but you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I grew up there, and then moved to a small town in North Mississippi. And the difference of those two towns were night and day. I mm-hmm. I started somewhat my drug drug addiction before I moved to the small town, but the small town sort of there wasn't nothing else there. I felt like I was out in, sort of in the middle of nowhere, and it's not that I needed a lot of things. It was just, you know, I just used the excuse there's nothing to do here. And so my drug problem, but everybody knew everybody. So it wasn't like you could hide stuff like that. Hmm. It wasn't very big enough. To yeah, it wasn't big it. enough because it was like here, Hohenwald. Right. If if you heard my name in a drug charge, 4,000 people would know exactly right. who I was right. and what was going on and would be talking about it. If you take that over to, let's just say, well, Columbia or, mm-hmm. or Jackson, which are not big towns, but they're much bigger than this. Right. Not that many Not people are going to talk handful. about it. Yeah, it's going to, it's, Well, see, the thing about where we came from was that there was no hiding it. There was no need to hide it. Everyone was the same. <laughs> right? that, Everyone was, what was expected. more or less okay with it. It was expected of you. Yeah. You know, like you weren't cool unless you took part in a yeah. specific aspect of the culture. Right. And that's just what the culture was. It was that's, just, there was, a, there was a sickness over the place and nobody knew that they were sick. 